Look at all these CRT monitors. I can't even get them all in the frame, really. But what you guys don't know is I actually have a lot of LCDs, too. There's two upstairs. There's one there. There's one there. And there's one that I really wanted to talk about. The BenQ model FP731. These, I think. Now these monitors are not hard to find, but they're hard to find in working condition. I have one upstairs that is in working condition. That was the second one I got. The first one died. The third one died. I have had three of them. Used to be a dual monitor setup. First one died. Still have the second one. I got another one and that one died. Except that this one was free. Got it on the curb. Which was the third one. And it was dead when I found it, mind you. But I want to show you what was wrong. That is if I can get it out. This is... Okay, there we go. So you can see here's the back panel. Still got the original caution sticker on it. Usually you peel that off, but I guess this person didn't. So the model says Q7G3, but that's not really. So the manufacture date on this was February 2005, so it's seven years old. Holy crap. Hard to believe 2005 is that long ago. Hey, folks. Here's a little RF shield. Here is the back of the... This is in... It's... The innards, another RF shield, front panel, see, FP731, thank you. This one doesn't have a crack, my other one has a crack in the top corner, but that's okay. I never had to take that one apart, it's always worked. First one is threw out, because really, who needs a dead monitor? I just kept this one for an autopsy, maybe I'll fix it, I don't know. It's a 17 inch. Hence, 7 in 731. Uh, so, let's examine these boards, shall we? They're all discharged because they've been sitting in this metal cage for so long. Don't ever handle a circuit board like this, by the way. I was doing that over there, but there's a carpet, so screw that. Anyway, you can see, this is the power supply board. This is the video controller board. Now, which one do you think should be bigger? Power supply board. There's more stuff that should be in the power supply board that even they didn't implement. I'll show you why that's bad in a minute. You can see the display board is just your average one of the mill Realtek display board with a BIOS. That's the thing that shows the BenQ logo when you turn it on. This goes to the uh, front panel controls. And you can see all the caps on there are fine. It's a real tech one, even though it has a BenQ stamp on the PCB here. You can see a little crystal right there. Probably for the display controller. There's another crystal right there. So, let's detach it. It's detached by about. Um, If I could count, I would have to say 14 pins. Doing this one hand is hard without the other one bolted down. Oh, I know. Use my foot. Just hold that there. Yeah, so you can see the bottom of it. Uh, got some nice corrosion there. Sure, VGA connector. It's VGA only board. There's no S video or DVI or any of that fancy shit. Let's see, this is where our display panel hooks up. The panel is leaned up over there as it has been for about a year now. I'll notice that in a lot of my videos just sitting there. This is good. This isn't. Now, most of the time, a tap on the power supply board will fail, causing the whole thing to go down. And you can see this is where the power plugs in. Don't like the power bricks. It's good. You can see it just usually grounds right here. It's the ground cable here. Let's see it's hooked up to the ground pin. Oh, excuse me, I'm still sick. Sick in their dog these last few weeks. But anyway. 
can see, although the capacitors are the usual failing point, none of these ones are bulged. Anyway, every single one, perfect, even the filter cap. It's perfect. Don't touch this, by the way, it could shock you. But don't touch the pins, I should say. Yeah, here's the voltage. Ah. Gotta be fucking kidding me. So, anyway. Instead of it being the capacitors that are the failure point here, what it actually is, is these diodes in here. It's not this relay. If that's even a relay, what the hell is that? I think it's a relay, I'm pretty sure it is, but you know, I could be wrong, as I have been many times before. It's a capacitor. Huh. Almost looked like a relay shell. Relays are usually wider, though. So. Anyway. It's one of these diodes. Now it's either these diodes or it's somewhere over here. I can't remember, but it's a di it's failure point somewhere in the diodes. So, not sure which, but I could find that out easily by a quick Google search of the number. Anyway, you can see we can't tell if this fuse is blown or not because it's a ceramic fuse. A fuse that you would be able to see blown would be. Let me grab on here. Have one sitting around. Assistant remains. Okay. Crowbar. There it is. One of these ones. Turn this up here. Vacuum cleaner stash. So, ceramic views. Can't see if it's blown or not. But one of these clear fuses, you can. You will, there's a little filament in there. Here, I put it on a dark surface, you'll be able to see it. I guess not. Because I have the world's worst camera. There's a little filament in there. This one's not blown. It's almost the same as the one in there. Except it's not ceramic, so. Anyway, it's a ceramic fuse. We don't know if it's blown or not. Test that with a multimeter. Oh man. I'm stuffed up today. As you can see, anyway, there's a little IC right there. I'm assuming that's to control voltage. Well, I mean, it wouldn't do the controlling of the voltage. It'd be, I don't know, I have no idea. And there's another IC there. Only two ICs in this whole board. Mind you, that is built a lot better than I would like. Or, no, I mean, it's built average. You can see, there's definitely room for more things, like, I doubt that would have been an IC right here, but it sure as hell could have been something that has lots of pins. The reason I don't say, I say it's not an IC is because ICs usually have their holes in line. This one, it's kind of not really. This is where it would have went right there. circuitry. Anyway, as you can see, there's room for a few more capacitors in the protection circuit. Some diodes, some relays, no, not some relays, I mean, there. Looks like there would have been room at one time to put one of those tiny little jacks that you plug in, right there. Intriguing. There would have been like a diode here, a diode here, some resistors there. Switch there. Resistor, resistor, switch, resistor. A few more caps over here. Some sort of IC thing. A couple more diodes and resistors. Like they didn't put everything in. Otherwise, if this one, if they did implement that DC one, the AC circuitry failed, there's always the DC. Only other way I could think of being able to use this is by hooking up some sort of other power source. If I could find the pin out for these, it is 14 pins. If I could fin find the the voltage, like what volt voltage goes to what pin, I could probably make power supply or use another power supply or something. 
plugs into here and is able to run the display, even if it can't run the backlight. It's no problem. Actually, no, the backlight ran off of here, so it wouldn't run the backlight either way. I mean, I could always just tear the backlight out of the panel and put a light bulb behind it if I had to. Yeah. So that's a BenQ FP731. Let's see, there's the rest of it over there. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Put this back in here. Didn't look that. That's about all for this video. I don't know what I'll do a video of next. Could be anything really, so until then.